Now, Lord Jesus, I thank you that we're bowing before you, our risen and soon coming King. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for the power that we sense in the blood of Jesus Christ that can forgive all sin, pay the penalty that we could never pay. Thank you for the privilege of being a servant in your mighty army. And Lord, I pray that we would focus upon your kingdom, your purpose, your plan for our life. Lord, revive our hearts. Revive me anew and afresh and touch me and anoint me with thy Holy Spirit. Lord, may you be glorified. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, one verse. The Bible says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things, all these things, all these things. We focus on all these things. But a lot of times we don't focus on the first part that God tells us to focus on. I know some of you were probably watching anytime you had opportunity, the updates of what was happening with Florence, weren't you? And uh, seeing what was going on, I, if you're like me, uh, flipping from channel to channel, you know, and, and trying to, because sometimes it get kind of boring and flip the channels like it happens in church, you flip channels. <laughs> and... Uh, so I, I, I was looking, and, and even, even yesterday, and even, as, even last night when I got back, I checked to see how things are going, and, and it's still right there. And they kept on saying, it's still raining. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it started two days ago, and it's still raining. It hasn't moved, seemingly. It's such a large storm, going at two or three miles per hour, uh, movement-wise. And, and one band after another just keeps on, it's still raining today. That's the title of the message, still raining today, except for one thing. I'd like you to think of spelling the word raining differently. R-E-I-G-N-I-N-G, -I -I raining, still raining today. See, the Bible talks about the kingdom of God, and someone reigns in the kingdom, and it's God who will reign but he tells us that we can reign with him. We can have the kingdom of God within us. And here's the key. Here's the key. Look at it with me, please. Verse 33, but, and anytime you see a conjunction, every word of God is perfect and pure and, and preserved and powerful and all that kind of thing. And uh, so if, if you look at the previous verses that we read just a few moments ago at the beginning of the service, uh, we focus on sometimes what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, and, and our clothing, and all these necessary things of life. Folks, it's but the grace of God that Florence is not flooding us. But the grace of God that we're not mourning with, with someone whose tree fell in their house and crushed a, a, a dear lady and her infant. But for the grace of God and His protection and His power, His mercy, His grace. Oh, we take so much for granted today, don't we? And we look and we seem to cherish the things that we can, that we can put our hands on, that we can handle and hold, and, and, and we, we want to try to hang on to those things. Sometimes the, the tighter we grip things, the easier it is for it to slip out of our grasp. And so the, Jesus is speaking there on the side of the mountain, and he's, he's talking to these people here at the Sermon on the Mount, and he says, you're seeking all these things, and every human being does. We need these things to live. He says, but, but. So I'm going to tell you something different. Seek ye first. Let's, let's look at this word seek. Seek, to search, to seek. for. Have you ever sought for something that you lost? I... Uh, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Oh, I got some, I, I can see it right here. I got some ladies punching guys. I don't know what you lost, guys. 
I don't know what it is. I don't know what happened this week. No, your wife didn't call me and tell me. I, but uh, but there's, there's some of that going on. I know that because it happens at my house frequently. <laughs> Honey, have you seen this? Have you seen that? No, I haven't touched it. Oh, that tells me something. <laughs> seek. Seek. Jesus talked about... Um, Seeking for the lost coin, uh, the prodigal son, the lost sheep, seek. Let me notice two things about this word seek. It, it, uh, the Bible seems to indicate these two thoughts. Early, seek early. Seek God early. Seek God first, seeking Him. Uh, Proverbs eight seventeen says it this way. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. In other words, not waiting till we have to. Um, you ever tell your teenager, take out the trash, and the next morning it's still sitting there? The teenager knows it doesn't come till you know, the next day, you know, and so there's no need to take it out, you know. But you want them to be obedient right there, Johnny, on the spot. I was with the Applegate family last night, and, and uh, I was texting him about his display. Stop by and pick up a prayer card when our missionaries are here. Uh, they bring them for you. <laughs> they want you to have them. That some of you put them uh, on your refrigerator. Some of you put them in your prayer list. Some of you put them in your Bible. Uh, but, but, but have those, and, and you have some prayer cards back there? Of course, of course. That's, that's, just, that's just a redundant question to ask a missionary. And, uh, but stop by and, and, and meet them and, and pick up a prayer card and things. And, and in order to have that back there, they have to have a table. I asked him, I said, do you have a table back there already set up? Did they, did they get that going for you? And uh, he, he, said, he said, no, not, not yet. It's important for, for them to have their display up. And I said, I said well, I'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll make sure and, and uh, get there and, and set that up for you. You know, have you ever... You ever made promises to people and you fear that you will forget them? Of all the things I've lost, I miss my mind the most. <laughs> so, Brother Tony, what I did, uh, I'm driving after I, after I uh, was sitting in a stoplight texting you. <laughs> sitting in a stoplight texting you. Which, by the way, I think that's illegal too. I think it is. So God's convicting me, folks. I'll be on my knees and, and change my ways, you know, and things. But, uh, uh, but, but, but anyway, um, so I, I just wanted, before I forgot about it, I, I, I texted him. I said, I asked about this. And uh, so he texted me back, and, and he, he said, no, not, not yet. So I said, I'll, 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 get that, I'll get that for you. And I thought, you know, whenever I get to church, there's this or that. A wall falls over like it did last night. And, and by the way, that's a serious problem. We don't want those walls to fall on people. You know, it's just, it's just the grace of God hasn't fallen on a child. So that's why we need to do something in the activity building. But anyway, um, so, so, so what I did was, I, I, all the way home, Brother Tony, I said, Applegate's table, table, Applegate's table, table, Applegate's table, Applegate's. You ever done that? When I went to bed, I said it out loud, Applegate's table, table, Applegate's, Applegate's table. You know, I just, I just kept doing that, kept doing that. When I woke up, you know what I thought? Table. Oh, yeah, Applegate's, you know, uh, Applegate's table, you know. So I got here, and the first thing I did, got that table, you know, for the Applegate's. It was important to me. I did not want to let them down. I wanted, whenever they showed up, I didn't want to look around, you know. I, 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 and so I did it early, and I prepared for it. It was important to me. When you do something early, then it's, it's a value. Seek early. Seek secondly. Seek earnestly. Earnestly. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Search earnestly. Early and earnestly. Seek him. Seek ye first. But seek ye first. This, th this thought of the word first, I know... Um, I understand the time. I understand that. I'm going to do my best to, to stay within it. First, I think of this, this, uh, this, this thought of a firm purpose. First, first, a firm purpose. If you do something first, then it, it's, it's critically important. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, he says... 
I have not arrived. If the Apostle Paul had not arrived spiritually, then let me just help you here. You and I are going to be working on becoming more like Jesus every day of our life until Jesus calls us home. There's none of us they are going to get to the place that we say, hey, I've graduated from this thing called Christian life. I've got all the answers. I've got it all figured out. You can follow me because I'm perfect. The Apostle Paul said, I have not arrived. I am not perfect. I count not myself. To, I, I'm adding up my life, and I say, boy, I fall short. How many of you all can testify I fall short? Yes. Yeah, that preacher falls short. Yeah, I saw that. And many of you say. We all do. We all fall short. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do first, this one, this first thing, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. What do, you, what do you forget behind? What do you leave behind you? I think first you need to leave behind you accomplishments. You need to leave behind you those things that you look back and, and people patted you on the back about. Some of you used to be athletes. Can you remember back that far? Uh, you used to be athletes. And you've got some trophies and you've got some awards and all that kind of thing. Some of you uh, had some great achievements academically. Some of you in, in work, you got awards after awards after awards in your job. Maybe in the military. All kinds, of, all kinds of ribbons and, and awards that you earned. And we're so thankful for that. But the Apostle Paul, he had a lot of achievements in his past too. He really did. He mentioned them just to kind of shut the mouths of some people one time. He went down the list. He said, I'm a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I mean, he, he went on about his training and all that kind of thing. And his upbringing and his family and, and all that kind of stuff. He said, that's nothing. I leave it behind me. Leave accomplishments. And uh, won't you leave behind you your failures too? Leave behind you your failures. Put them under the blood of Jesus. Confess them as your failures to an almighty God. Bring them to the cross where Jesus paid for them anyway. They're all paid for. Bring them and lay them there and then leave them behind you and press on toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm so thankful that when Satan reminds me of my failures and reminds me of my past, I can remind him of his future. My future is bright. His future is bleak. Seek. Seek earnestly. Seek early. First, that's the thought of a firm purpose and a focal point. A firm purpose and a focal point. Stay focused. What do we stay focused on? Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you look at people, people will let you down. People will fail you. People will disappoint you. People can only be in one place at one time. Even when they're doing right. Even when they're serving God. They can only be in one place at one time. If you depend upon people because they have skin on, because you can see them, because they can pat you on the back, give you a hug, encourage you, weep with you, laugh with you, all those things are good. But if you depend upon people because of that, there'll be many times that you are lonely, many times that you are discouraged, and sometimes that you're disappointed. But let me tell you something. You will never be lonely. You will never be discouraged. You will never be disappointed in Jesus Christ. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Closer than a brother. Say, well, I'm not very close to my brother. <laughs> Just imagine if you were. <laughs> Just imagine if you were. Closer than a brother. Someone who'd be right as... Right, you know, you can pick on anybody, but don't pick on my family. I can pick on my family, but don't you pick on my family. Closer than a brother. Seek first. First. With that focal point. 
with that eye on Jesus. Looking to the end, to the finish line. Waiting and wanting to hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Come on home. I was in Bible college, and in freshman year in Bible college, you had to take uh, two semesters of PE. And first semester, I did freshman, freshman year, you know, and here I am, 19 years old, taking PE. And you had to do so many sit-ups in a minute, and I guess 60 sit-ups in a minute, and and uh, however many push-ups and all that kind of thing. And, and uh, no, I'm not going to demonstrate. Um, <laughs> it would be a fast demonstration. <laughs> it wouldn't last long. And we'd have to run. And uh, I remember running. I had it 7 o'clock in the morning. I thought, well, I'll get this out of the way, you know, and, and uh, first thing in the morning. And, and so we're running, and it's kind of cold outside, and uh, I never ran track. Anybody run, run track in here? Anybody run track? Let me see you. Oh, yeah, good, good, good. Okay, excellent. Okay, the, you probably are going to understand this more than, than, uh, than some of the other folks. But no one prepped me for this. And the, the, the long run, Brother Charlie, you didn't run track? You do that, but you do that Iron Man thing. You do all, all, all the other stuff. Okay, all right. Um, So I'm running, and I'm thinking about that grade. I'm running for a grade. Something wrong with that. I mean, they're timing me, and they're timing me on, on, on my improvement, and my improvement determines my grade. This was my final, Brother Gary, my final. And so I, I'm just running as hard as I can, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking, I need an A. You know, it would be terrible to pull my grade point average because I can't run. And all of a sudden, I, I start getting this pain in my side. It's like a knife right there. I think, I'm dying. <laughs> I knew I'm just, I'm having a heart attack. I'm sure that's what it is. Pain right here. Anybody, anybody get, a, get a witness on that? You know, okay, you know what I'm talking about, that pain in the side, all right? And uh, no one told me that that was somewhat normal for someone who's out of shape. <laughs> but I wanted that A. Oh, I wanted that A. And I, I, I kept breathing, kept running, kept breathing, kept running. And it's amazing. Brother David, it's amazing what happened. That pain went away eventually. While I was running, it went away. And in its place, what happened was there was a euphoria that came over me. I mean, it was almost like my, my feet weren't even touching the ground. I was, I was running and I was enjoying it. And here comes the finish line. I think, wow, I could go a little bit longer. It's okay. But there was the finish line. And boy, I kicked it hard and finished well. I think I got an A minus. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, folks, when it comes to searching and seeking, and when it comes to putting him first, we're not looking for, a, for some kind of grades going to go, our port cards going to be forgotten and burnt up one day. We're talking about crowns. And as we're, as we're fighting the good fight of faith, there's going to be times it's going to hurt. There's going to be times that there's going to be misunderstanding. There's going to be times that someone's going to turn away and, and, and uh, it's going to happen. And it's going to be a, a knife in your side. And you can decide to just give in to that pain and quit. Or you can keep your eyes fixed on the finish line. Say, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep going. This is the first thing I'm going to do. This is the most important thing I'm going to do. I'm going to stay focused. Our focal point. We have a firm purpose and a focal point. This is the first thing in my life. If anything else doesn't come together, this is going to come together. I'm going to please Jesus Christ in my life. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Now, that thought of kingdom, you, th you think of authority, you think of power, you think of his glory. 
I think of two, two things that, that, that uh, just come to my mind. John 18, 36, the Bible said, my kingdom is not of this world or else my servants would fight. Do you remember, remember the, the, the account where Jesus is betrayed there in the Garden of Gethsemane? My kingdom is not of this world or else my servants would fight. I would tell them to fight. But my kingdom does not come from this world. His kingdom comes from above. And he wants to set up his kingdom down here. And by the way, he is going to set up his kingdom down here. But he wants to set up his kingdom in your heart and in your life. He wants to rule. He wants to reign in your heart, on the throne of your heart, on the throne of your life. He wants to be in charge. He wants to be the one who guides you into the green pastures, who directs you to his provision, to amaze you with his protection, his wisdom, his strength. He has a plan. He has a plan for his kingdom. A kingdom has a plan. And you know, when we get in on God's plan, that's a plan that's going to work. That's a plan that he's going to bless. You know, his plan is, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The plan of the kingdom is based on that right there. His plan, the kingdom of God. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end will come. There were two teenagers saved on Thursday night. Praise the Lord. Amen. Two teenagers trusted Christ as their Savior. I mentioned uh, to my daughter um, when she was telling me about that uh, Thursday night. I said to her, I said, well, I guess that wasn't the last ones. Or else if they were the last ones, then we'd all be up in glory. One day the last person is going to get saved. And God the Father is going to say that completes the whole bunch. My family, Jesus, bring our family home to us. The plan of his kingdom, the plan of his kingdom to win the lost, the power of his kingdom, Matthew 6, 13. Now, you, you, you're in Matthew chapter 6. Look, please, with me. Matthew chapter 6. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's skip back to verse number, verse number 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Now, look up at me for a moment. Most of you can quote this that we know as the Lord's Prayer, Okay? This is a model prayer. The subjects that he addresses are good subjects to follow as we pray as well. Okay? It's kind of an outline to prayer. And that's another sermon. Okay? That's another message. But it's an outline to prayer. So don't think that if you just pray the Lord's Prayer that you have impressed God. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's better than nothing. Okay? But it's, it's, it's a starting point. It's a starting point. Let's read what he said. Our Father, read it out loud with me. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. His kingdom, I think of his plan. His kingdom, I think of his power. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. His power. Now, he's promised his power to reign with him. He's promised that he will give you his kingdom within you. Therefore, you have the power of omnipotence within you, not to do our will, but to do his will. Whenever he says to you, witness to someone, whenever he says to you, you need to go and get some of these bags and, and knock on someone's door and invite them. You need to follow up on somebody who's absent and say, hey, here's some brownies, some cookies. I just want you to know we love you. We care about you. We miss you. We'd love to have you back at church. I, hey, folks, I, I, I just want you to come and visit us. And this is why I'm, I'm hanging these door hangers through the neighborhood and things. 
You say, I could not do that. You can do it if God wants you to do it because he will enable you to do it. Amen. Amen. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It's his glory. We're not patting each other on the back. We're not gloating. We're not competing with one another. God forgive churches for competing against one another. We're on God's team. We're on God's team. And this is, this is one division. You know, in a football team, you got a, you got a, a, a kicking team. You got an offensive team. You got a defensive team. You know, if the offensive team is on the sidelines and the kicking team is out on the field and the defense is, is they're waiting their turn and that ball is kicked off by the kicking team and it goes up and they take off running and the guy receiving the football, he gets it and what happens? Sometimes, rarely, but sometimes he goes to catch it and it slips through. And with that kind of force, it slips through, hits the ground, and who knows which way it's going to go. Boing, 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 you know. And someone from that kicking team, they recover the football, and they're already running that direction, and they score a touchdown. This is a kicking team. They score a touchdown. Do you think that quarterback is going to sit back there and say, no, nah, that was what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to make that pass. How dare they score a, t score a touchdown? They're all going to go, whoo, amen, that's great, or whatever they say, and God forgive them for sometimes what they say. <laughs> Listen, folks, I rejoice when I hear something is going on in, in, in Uganda or something's going on in, in, in Malawi or something's going on in, in France or in Portugal or in Spain or, or, or in, in Deland or DeBerry or Orange City. Or, I, re I rejoice because it's his kingdom. And I look at what I'm doing for him and I ask myself the question, is he still reigning today in my heart? Seek, early and earnestly. Seek ye first with a firm purpose, with a focal point. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Follow his plan and rely on his power. And he will do the work. We have journey through Christmas coming up. We have each one reach one going on. We need his power. We need to be doing his kingdom work. Is he still reigning today? It's still raining in North Carolina and in South, in South Carolina. It's still raining. That thing's just going on and on. Florence is just still going. Every time you look at that, when you see that in the news, I want you to think about this. Is he still reigning in my heart? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Some people have been visiting this church and we're so thankful for your presence and, and your participation. But some people have been visiting this church for an awful long time and you have not linked up officially saying this is the family of God that God has called me to serve with. I invite you to come today in a moment. I invite you to make this your spiritual home, your church home. Uh, more importantly than that, some person here is not part of God's family. If you were to die today, you don't know for sure that heaven's your home. You might say, preacher, that's me. I wish I knew that for sure. I should know that, but I just don't. Could be that I was so young, I don't remember but people say that I got saved, but in my heart, God's been dealing with my heart. Please don't leave this place without that settled and anchored down in your heart and life. We'll take a Bible and show you how that God's love can become real to you personally in your heart. And the kingdom of God can take up residence within you. Your sins will be forgiven. Your name written in heaven. Would you today just reach out to God because I know he's reaching out to you. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed.
Ask God, would you touch me again? Touch your people once again. Would you reign again in my life? I ask you to take the position of the throne. I'm going to seek you early. I'm going to put you first. I'm going to focus on your kingdom and what you want done in my life. That's, that's what a dedicated Christian does. I'm going to ask you in a moment, whenever we stand to, to pray, as we stand before the, before the songs even begin to be played, if God has dealt with your heart, if you're saying, yes, God, I'm coming to you anew and afresh, I need your touch, I need your reigning in my heart and my life, I want to put you first, and I'm telling you that in a way, just like I said, Applegate's table, Applegate's table. I'm coming forward in a way that I won't forget. I'm putting you first. Just get along with God and tell him that, Christian.